Hi and welcome to week seven of Sarah Hatton's A Day Out Blanket and this week is called Common Lane and the square is made up of cables so if you need a recap on how to do your cable stitches just pop along to the video for week four and um, you'll see how to do the cables that you need there. They are just worked over um, four stitches that's the only difference so you pop two stitches on your cable needle instead of three that are shown in the video okay so that's um a recap on the cables and the rest is just purl stitches and decreasing and what you'll see is you can either make this in one of two ways you can cast on all your stitches onto one needle and knit the square flat now, if you do that, you're going to be starting at the outside of the square and then you work and you decrease towards the centre. And then at the end, all you'll need to do is to sew up the little seam that runs at the side. Now, you'll see that if you do work flat, there's one extra stitch to cast on. And that means that there is on the right side, you'll have an, a purl one at the beginning and a purl one at the end of the row. And on the wrong side of your work, there is a knit one at the beginning and a knit one at the end. And these, this extra stitch that you have at the end of your rows um, is the seam stitch. And you will lose that extra stitch when you sew up. So that's how to do the flat square. But then if you want to work the square in the round, there are two ways to do that. So you can either do this on double pointed needles or you can use a circular needle and use what's called the magic loop method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to spread the stitches over your double pointed needles, first of all, and join to start knitting in the round. And then when I've done that part, I'll then show you how to cast on with a long circular needle and explain how you can work the square using that the magic loop method so it's a bit more tricky but hopefully if I show you how to do it you might give it a go even if you you could make um, one on double pointed needles and then try the magic loop method on another one uh, and if you don't like it just go back to your double pointed needles but you know sometimes it's nice to try new techniques because you might find that it really suits the way that you knit and that you might really like it so first of all I'm going to show you how to cast on onto double pointed needles and join in the round so the pattern tells you to cast on 132 stitches so the best thing to do because we have a square and we have four sides is to use four double pointed needles to spread our stitches over so that you've got an equal number of stitches per double pointed needle and then you use the if you use a set of five you can use the fifth needle to knit with to start knitting off the stitches with so what I've done already is I've cast on 33 stitches onto each of these needles because 132 divided by four is 33 so I've already done three uh, needles so now I'm just going to take my fourth needle what I tend to do is just hold it alongside the last needle now I cast on um, with my thumb so you can just cast on however you choose to cast on is absolutely fine so now I'm just casting on right next to that needle I'm pulling the yarn tight so I don't get a big loop of yarn between the two needles I'll let go of the the orange needle in a moment but I just want to keep them as connected as possible so we don't have a great big long gap between them. So I'm just kind of pretending that the orange one isn't there. So I can let go of it now and just concentrate on the yellow needle. So now I'm going to cast on the rest of the stitches. I need 33. So I've already got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, thirty-one, thirty-two, just about got enough yarn here, thirty-three. So now I've got thirty-three stitches onto this last DPN. Now, what you have to make sure is that your um, stitches and your needles are not twisted before you start knitting in the round. 
sometimes they do twist all around so you have to untwist them and make sure that all of the right side of your work is facing so can you see on this pink one here how the stitches are twisted around the needle well we don't want that to happen so we're going to untwist those and just make sure that they're all pointing in the right direction or sitting in the right direction okay so i think we're there now with those we just turn them round like that you can see a little bit better now you're depending on how you've cast on you may um, have your tail end of yarn at the other end so don't worry about the tail end of yarn if it's in a different position that's just because you've cast on differently to me and what i'm going to do is just going to slide the stitches on the f on this blue needle on the first needle that i cast the stitches on i'm sliding the stitches up to the top and i'm doing the same on this last needle that i've cast on okay so just to make sure you've got that right i'm just going to move it up so it's all in camera shot and you can see i've got 33 stitches now on each needle i've got a tail end of yarn and i've got the yarn from the ball and all of the stitches, the right side, should be visible and facing towards you. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to join in the round. Now you can, if you want to, just start knitting and then just use this little tail end of yarn to catch those stitches together later. You can do that. That's absolutely fine. And it probably won't look any different whatsoever. But what I tend to do is I bring my needles together so these first and last needles and then I slip this top stitch of the left hand needle over to the right hand needle and then I lift the second what is now the second stitch on the right hand needle up and over the top stitch so that those need, uh, stitches are crossed and I'm just going to tuck on the yarn to tighten up the stitches. So can you see now those stitches are connected, they've crossed over. And so you've joined the round and there'll be no little gap when you start knitting. OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop just a little stitch marker or a safety pin into that very first stitch of the round so that I know but that's the beginning of the round okay so i like to use these little sort of safety pin type stitch markers but you can use anything you like as long as it's a removable one that you can just pop over um, the stitch because if you just pop it onto the needle itself it's just going to fall off the end because there's nothing to keep it in place so it's best if you can pop it just around the first stitch and then we're ready now to start knitting okay so just pop those back and we're going to take our fifth double pointed needles and then you just start knitting off the stitches so i'm going to follow the pattern just for a little bit so you what you do is you you hold on to the needle that you're knitting off and just let all the others fall don't worry about those just pretend that they're not there and so if i follow the pattern it tells me to purl one Okay, and then it tells me to knit four, one, two, three, four, purl one, and knit 27. And what that should do is that should take me to the end of this first yellow needle. So the first needle that I'm knitting off. It's quite handy that these five millimetre DPNs are actually in different colours. I think I got them free with the magazine. They've been really useful. So if I knit 27, that will take me to the end of this double pointed needle. Okay, now you do have to make sure that your double pointed needles are long enough to hold all of the stitches. Can you see now this has become free and so I'll just rotate my work a little bit, push those neat stitches up to the top and then just do the pattern again. So it was purl one, 
Now make sure you pull the yarn tight so that those stitches stay connected and there isn't a great big gap between them. So purl one, knit four, again tug quite tightly and then you just carry on every time you knit all the stitches off one needle that becomes the next needle to knit with and you just do that all the way round for every round and then when you reach the stitch marker you know that you've finished that particular round okay so because we made sure that all of our stitches were facing the right direction we'll just have the right side of our work facing all the time and that's how you knit on double pointed needles The other method mentioned in the pattern is called the magic loop method and you may have used this before or you may not so I'm just going to give you a little demonstration on how it works. I'm not going to knit the square because it would take too long to kind of get through the stitches and show you so I'm just going to use a small sample of stitches and then you can apply this to your square where there are 132 stitches and the way that magic loop method works is that you use a long circuit needle and it needs to be one with a long cable cord about 80 to 100 centimeters otherwise it doesn't really work because you need to have quite a bit of give to be able to um, maneuver the needle as you'll see see why when I start to show you the technique so what I've done is I've just cast on onto one needle tip you're going to cast on your 132 stitches I'm just going to cast on 20 I have 17 already so I'm using the uh, thumb the long tail thumb method now of casting on where you um, make a little loop of yarn around your thumb you put your needle in and then you take it over that loop of yarn that's on your finger and you pull it through and pull it tight so it's under the thumb and pull the loop through under over and pull it through and the reason I've used that method is so that the wrong side where the little pearl bumps are are on the the back of, of the stitches as I'm looking at them and this is nice and smooth here so I'm just going to check that I've got 20 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 I've got 20 stitches you will have 132 stitches slide those stitches all of them onto the cord and what you're going to do is you're going to find the halfway point. Now you could, if you wanted to, pop a stitch marker when you've cast on half of your stitches and you don't have to count again. So I'm just going to count 10 because that's my halfway point. Your halfway point will be 66. Is that right? 66. Yep. For, you have 132. So your halfway point will be in between 66 and 67 stitch. Grab the cord, you kind of bend it with your finger and it starts to poke out between those stitches and then just pull it. And then what will happen is these each set of stitches can then slide up onto the needle tips. OK. And so now you've got half of your stitches on one needle tip and half of your stitches on the other needle tip. OK, so you're just going to line them all up like that. So, you know, you've got everything all set up and your yarn from the ball will be on the back needle. OK, so that's how it needs to be, because what will happen now is we're going to knit the stitches off the front needle. And because we because the yarn is on the back needle, it's going to pull across and it joins them up. It joins up this side. So you haven't got, you know, it's not separate. It's joined together and you will be working two pattern repeats on the first needle tip and then the other two pattern repeats on the second needle tip so you kind of got your square split in half so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the back needle tip out of the stitches okay so that the stitches fall onto the onto the cord and that's why you need the cord to be really long because you've got to pull it enough 
to be able to knit with this needle and not let the stitches all go back together you know you don't want to pull the cord out completely because the stitches will all go back onto one needle then they won't be split onto two so you pull your stitch out uh, your needle tip out make sure that your yarn is on the inside um in fact if i do that get it out of the way but you don't want it to be twisted around and on the outside of your work you want it to be coming out of the inside of that stitch at the back so you're just going to start knitting like you normally would and pull that first stitch quite tight so it joins up that side so these two are connected so the needle tip and the cord are quite close together so then you'll follow the pattern I'm just actually knitting straight just to show you how the technique works and you'll just knit off following the pattern all of the stitches on the first needle tip so the first half of your stitches you'll just knit those off so they will end up on the needle tip okay and now what you're going to do is you're going to turn everything around because this is now the back needle tip you're going to pull the cord so that the front knee front stitches go onto the front needle push them up to the top oh i think i've knitted a bit tight there so that you're in the same position that you were before with the yarn at the back and the yarn is coming out of the um, pearl bump on the wrong side of that stitch and so now you do with exactly the same again you pull the back needle tip out of those stitches just make sure that your yarn is in the right place and push these stitches on the front needle tip up to the top and then you just knit again and pull this really tight when you do that first stitch or when you've made the stitch as well give it another little tug and then just carry on and what you're doing there is you're joining up those sides so it feels like you're knitting in rows it feels as though you're knitting two halves of something but actually you are knitting in the round and it is all joined up And then when you get to the end, you turn around again and then you just repeat the whole process over and over. The fact that you've not got to sew that seam and the fact that um, you can knit really well because it's like knitting um, on straight needles really. So if, you like, if you're not keen on double pointed needles, this could be an alternative way for you to knit in the round. So I do hope that helps and gives you an idea um, of what the magic loop method is in case you want to give it a try.